Thanks for joining me tonight for Midweek with Pastor Brad. So excited for, that you were joining me and uh, looking forward to sharing with you a devotion from God's Word and uh, sharing with you some announcements about this week. Um, it's going to be a good time together, I believe. I want to invite you to take your copy of God's Word. Turn with me to Exodus 33. I want to continue in the same vein that we were in on Sunday morning um, as we talked about the importance of personal Bible study, hearing from God personally. I want you to know that I believe that's really, really, really important. Uh, I wanted to go back to the Old Testament because um, I've always been fascinated by how uh, in the Old Testament, there's a whole lot of statements throughout the all, all the Old Testament that says, and the Lord said, and the Lord spoke, and the Lord, you know, told him. And uh, over and over again, we see these, it's almost like they, that the, in the Old Testament characters, they had a they had a personal experience with God that many, many of us would say, I've not really heard. I've not heard an audible voice or I've not been told something by God yet so clearly as they would in the Old Testament. And, and I just want to say that, you know, God speaks to us through his word, but he also uses other things. And throughout the Old Testament, we see him audibly saying things to people and doing things to speak and direct. And so I've often thought, well, man, what it would have been like to live in the Old Testament times and to have God to be able to speak clearly to you. You know, well, it'd be a lot easier, I would say, if if, if God would just tell me, Brad, go do whatever. And I, you know, then I'm like, okay, well, that's God. I'll go do that. Uh, I always thought it might be easier for that. I've always kind of been jealous of those Old Testament figures and, and probably not rightfully so. Uh, we have been really, really blessed that we have God's word which is still just as direct, and it's still truth, and it speaks clarity just like it would if it was audible, except God has actually blessed us as New Testament believers to have the word written down. We have a copy of it written down for us to know. Um, and so uh, I want to go back all the way to the book of Exodus today, and I want to read a passage of scripture about how God spoke to Moses now Moses is leading the people um, out of Egypt uh, there in the beginning of Exodus uh, and, and toward the promised land. And they get along the way. They've had some pit hiccups. They've had some pitfalls that they've fallen in. And he gets to uh, this point when they're being commanded to leave Sinai. And the people have been, uh, they've, uh, they've um, made some bad decisions. They've uh, wanted to fall back into idol worship. And Moses goes out and meets uh, with God in a place called the Tabernacle of Meeting. If you will, it's kind of like a modern day place where Moses would have his quiet time, where God would speak to him, and it was outside the camp. So follow along with me in Exodus chapter 33, verses 7 through verses 11. Moses, the scripture says, took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the Tabernacle of of meeting, or the tent of meeting, as some of you might, scriptures might say. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose up. And, and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. Now, I want you to get this. The people would know. They would watch Moses and know when God, when he was going to hear from God. And they so reverenced the voice of God speaking to their leader that they would go to the edge of their tent, of their place of living, and they would rise in reverence just because Moses was going to speak with God. That's how much reverence they had for God. Verse 9. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tent tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. Now, I don't know if you underline things in your Bible. I might encourage you to underline that. The Lord talked to Moses. Now, set the scene. Moses is going out to the tabernacle of meeting and, and a pillar of cloud. The people are watching from their doors and the pillar of cloud begins to descend upon this tabernacle or this tent of meeting when Moses walks inside and it's the Spirit of God coming down to talk with Moses. Verse 10, And all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. That's awesome. They're so reverenced, the experience that Moses was having with God, that they worshipped. 
They had a worship experience. Verse 11, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. Kind of jealous of that. As a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Man, I think this is one of those fascinating images of, of the beauty and the majesty of getting to be face to face with God. I'm so thankful for the gospel of Jesus Christ because I now, uh, we call it the fancy term for that, the theological term is is the priesthood of the believers. I don't need a priest to stand in, in between me and God because Jesus has become my high priest. He stands in between me and God and gives me the right to approach the throne of God and to meet with God face to face. I get to do that through his word. I get to do that in prayer. I get to do that in worship. It's a special, special thing. Here, Moses meets with God face to face in the tabernacle of meeting. There's a few things that that I took note of that I want to encourage you in as we think about uh, this text and how it relates maybe to us. First of all, I noticed that Moses had a place to meet with God. It was a place that he had to meet with God called the tent or the tabernacle of meeting. I hope you have a place that you meet with God. Oftentimes in the morning, I meet with God right here in my office, sitting here with the word of God open and praying and seeking God's face. Why? Because it's an important place that I have set aside so that I can be with God. I can communicate with God. I can pray. I can spend time in God's word. There in verse 7, Moses took his tent, pitched it outside the camp, away from all the distractions so he could meet with God. It's a reminder to us that you need a place that you can get along with God. Number two, people reverenced that experience. I think it's awesome. Uh, our culture doesn't necessarily... Uh, revere that practice anymore, but the people so feared and loved God and wanted to know God's direction for them that they even reverenced their leader meeting with God and having that experience. We see it in verse 8 there. It says, So that it was whenever Moses went out to, to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. What was, what was so big about this? I believe there was a fascination about the fact that God was speaking to them. Let's, let's not miss this important part of this story. You see, we ought to still be fascinated by the fact that God would still speak to us. God wants to communicate with us. He does so through his word. What a beautiful story here. These people so were fascinated that they stood in reverence at the tent door to watch the Spirit of God hover over the tent of meeting and God speak to Moses. Let's not take advantage of that. God, is, God has blessed us with the opportunity to meet with him through the blood of Jesus. And we get to approach the, bold, the throne of boldly before God. What an awesome privilege it is. Let's not miss that. The people reverence that experience. We need to reverence that experience. We need to be fascinated by the idea that God would speak to us, us fallen humans, that God made a way through his son Jesus, that we could speak to him directly. And he can speak to us. And he does so through prayer and also through the word of God. Third thing I noticed in this text. It was evident when Moses was meeting with God. What was evident about it? Well, the, the, the cloud that led them by day descended. I, don't, I can't even picture it. I know I've seen artist depictions of this, but can you imagine the cloud just kind of hovering and just kind of coming down over this tent? And when Moses was in there meeting with God, it was a, this, you could even see the presence of God. I think we need to remember that when we really meet with God today, that it should, the, the result of that should be evident to the people around us. You see, when the spirit of God falls upon us, he changes us. He, we, we, we humble ourselves to him and he begins to, to do a work in us that becomes evident to other people. You see, it was evident that God was there. It should be evident when we meet with God, we get in our personal quiet and Bible study. It should be evident, not only to us, but to those people around us, that we have been with God. There's power in meeting with God. The number four thing that I took note of, notice of is that then God got to, then Moses got to speak to God face to face, and here's what it says. He talked with God. He met with him face to face as he would with a friend. Can, can, you, just, can you just imagine that? You see, 
I love the fact that it, it goes on and says, like, as a friend. Because I think even this time, they so reverenced God that they, they couldn't even speak God's name. Like They couldn't write the word Jehovah without leaving out uh, letters because they so reverenced and feared and respected God. But yet here it says he approached him as a friend. You see, we have God, the Father, who is our Abba Father. He's our daddy. Let's not forget the very personal nature of meeting with God. A very personal experience that God would choose to meet with us through his word as regularly as we would like. You see, the scriptures teach us that the word of God is living, it's active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's living and it's active. Meaning, you can read it, I can read it, same passage of scripture, and God can speak to us differently about how it applies to our life in the time in which we read it. It's personal. It's very personal. I, I love the fact, I want to flip over if you if you want to turn with me to, uh, it's a very familiar passage of scripture, and I quoted it on Sunday morning, and I didn't get a lot of time to flesh it out, but in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says this, and I, and I love this passage of scripture. It's a reminder to us just how powerful the word of God is. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. I said Sunday, some of your scripture says all scripture was God breathed. It was God breathed. It was breathed out of the mouth of God. For what? For us individually. For what good does it bring? Well, he tells us. The Apostle Paul tells Timothy here. He says, and is profitable for doctrine. We're going to talk about doctrine on Sunday morning, but, but doctrine is a set of beliefs. It's for us to know how to believe, to know how to trust God, for reproof and correction. Hey, we need, we need that in our life, don't we? We need to know when we need to repent. And for instruction in righteousness, to know how to live godly lives. And it goes on and says, verse 17, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I'm glad you joined me tonight, and I hope that in this time you understand just what you're holding in your hand. Whether you're looking at it on a screen or you're looking at it, uh, you have a copy of God's Word in your hands, a physical copy. The words of that are powerful because they've been God-breathed into your life, and it's profitable for you. Profitable for doctrine, for you to know the set of beliefs which to live by, for for reproof and correction. Because we're not always going to do right and God's word keeps us in line. And for instruction in righteous living. How do we live then? If it corrects one way, then it gives us another example of how we should live. That we may be complete, equipped for every good work that God has for us. You know, I hope you were blessed Sunday morning by the message. And I hope that today's devotion kind of adds to that for you. Hope it brings to light that that you know we need a place to meet. We need to reverence and be fascinated by the experience that we have with God. We, we, we need to we need to realize that when we meet with God, it needs to be evident to all that that God has gotten into our life and He has changed us. And, and and then and then we need to remember what a privilege it is to have call God our Abba Father, to call Him our friend. So. How is God speaking to you today? I hope and pray that you will open your heart to that. If you don't have a Bible reading plan, uh, let me just encourage you, if you didn't watch uh, the message or you weren't here on campus Sunday morning, how about you start with one verse? Say, which verse do I go to? I don't know. Do a Google search for the top 90 Bibles, top, top 100 Bible verses. And, you know, and there'll be people's opinions, but it'll be a good place to start. And, and read one of those verses every day for 90 days, 100 days. And, 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 and so commit yourself to a plan. I said Sunday, be consistent in that plan. In other words, every day. And then be compliant with what the word says. In other words, do it. Do what it says. Be obedient to it. And I said the, it's more important for there to be a commitment of consistency than there is, and compliance, than there is quantity. So you might get frustrated when you say, I... You know, I committed to read the Bible through this year, but here it is, you know, February the 24th, and I'm already way behind, and I'm frustrated, so I quit. 
you know, I believe you could find one or two minutes to read God's word and contemplate and pray to him about how you want to try to fulfill that or how you could be thankful for that. So I want to invite you to just ponder those things today. How can I be in God's word more and get more out of being in God's word? And so I hope that is a blessing to you today. I am looking forward to our weekend. It's going to be a great time together here on campus at First Baptist or whether you're joining us on the live stream at 9 a.m. Um, we're going to worship together. We're going to talk about uh, the committed church again. But this week we're going to focus on being committed to a small group community. You see, as a large group of believers, it's easy to get lost. It's hard to connect. Uh, you know, just on a Sunday morning attendance, but we break ourselves into smaller groups so that we can develop better. So we can connect with one another, we can connect to God, and, and, and so we're going to talk about that on Sunday morning. It's going to be a great time to be together. I want to go ahead and remind you that March the 7th is a big day for us as we uh, kind of go back into some smaller groups. Uh, it's not as small groups as we want them to be. It's hybrid life groups. We'll have three adult classes that are going to be meeting, an older class, a middle-aged class, a younger class. You'll be hearing more about that. Uh, they're going to meet at 10 a.m. after our worship service, and they'll go from 10 to 11. And so I want to invite you to join us. We're going to launch back with kids worship on March the 7th. So there'll be a place for all your kids, babies through uh, sixth grade, uh, at a, a worship hour as well as a Sunday school hour. So it's going to be a good time. Uh, launch back on March the 7th. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for April the 4th, Easter Sunday at the Hazel Green High School football stadium. It's going to be huge. I can't wait to preach a message called Rescue Story. I'll launch a series that day. I know and hope and pray that you have a rescue story, but I know that there'll be people who join us that have never had a rescue story where Jesus come and saved them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share from my heart about how God has sent Jesus to be our rescuer. And it's going to be a beautiful time of worship. I want you to invite somebody to come be a part of that. Help us spread the word. We're about to be launching out social media, um, uh, advertisements, uh, emails. Spread those out to your friends. Share them with your neighbors. Post them on your, your uh, neighborhood Facebook pages. All those kinds of things. Invite people to join you. It's going to be a great day of worship as we gather together with our community and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Listen, I hope and pray you have a great rest of your week. I love you guys. If I can serve you, if our church can serve you in any ways, please reach out to one of us. Let us know those needs. We would love, love, love to meet you where you are, whether it's a spiritual need, a physical need, and assist you in your journey. We love you. We look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless.